How can we really help reform prisons? Along the years, there has been an increasing amount of deinstitutionalization, which forces people with mental illnesses to go to prison, rather than receive proper care. Mentally ill people are negatively affected by the criminal justice system, which leads to the worsening of their situation. Multiple officers have been criminally charged and dozens suspended at New Jersey's women's facility after prisoners said they were brutally beaten by staff. <coughs> Dent was later diagnosed with a concussion. Another woman pulled from her room was Desiree De Silva. Why would y'all punch on me like that? No reason. Uh, I received a 20 year sentence. So, and I wound up doing 15 years and four months. This system is not new. Prisons are harsh, challenging places with cold environments. I will say this that I had an attorney come down to see me about my case and, uh, I said, uh, here, I'll let you take a quick look around before you leave. And he looked around and uh, looked down the crammed uh, living facilities. Uh, the camp was, is supposed to hold about 80 people. And at that point in time, it, was, it held about 160 people. So that's double the capacity that it was supposed to hold. I worked there for a while and didn't like that. It was like a sweatshop kind of deal. Prisoners face problems such as overcrowding, lacking health treatment, and violence. Between 300,000 to 400,000 people with mental illnesses are in prisons. But as far as a, a program that really, you know, that really helped, you know, I can't say that they have very many. They say there's programs in Congress passed a bill called uh, the First Step Act that was supposed to implement programs so you could earn time off your sentence. But um, they basically consider, like, you know, cleaning the sinks is your job or whatever it is, programming, and then you can earn your time off instead of actually having to do real programming. About 26% of inmates are diagnosed with a mental health condition at some point in their life. These two facts are connected. Social isolation and loneliness can put people at a higher risk for a weakened immune system and high blood pressure. One way to combat this is support systems. When provided peer support groups, inmates can find common ground. This common ground leads to a decrease in isolation, violence, and other factors which contribute to a worsening mental state. In addition to this, Support systems are proven to be vital for maintaining normalcy. It's vital that we hold kindness and empathy for prisoners. It is also vital to remove barriers in prisons which harm inmates, such as solitary confinement, the lack of natural light, and the excusing of physical violence. American prisons have always prioritized control. This has always predominantly affected marginalized groups. Prisoners are often not able to readjust to life outside after finishing their sentence, causing the cycle of imprisonment. I've never had anxiety attacks, didn't have anxiety attacks in prison, but when I got out, I was having them because I couldn't, I, it was hard to deal with. I had a, things come on the front porch, my, I, I was amazed at you know, all this stuff coming on the front porch every day that my daughter was, you know, uh, ordering and stuff. I said, what is this, man? This, uh, you know, I, I, it was all new to me, but, but just, I was just kind of a, a mess because uh, I couldn't deal with uh, everything going on. It was so different than when I, when I went in. This issue could be addressed by reusing rehabilitation-centered programs rather than programs that only focus on punishment. The current rehabilitation programs provided by the government are insufficient. 
the system doesn't care. Programs often focus less on the individual and fail to address the original issue. Well, they have what's called the halfway house that everybody goes to before you release and you live there and they're supposed to help transition you. But the, the fact is they just want you to take whatever shitty job you can get because they want to take 25% of your paycheck while you're there. It's not that they're actually helping you do anything. They don't really help you get a job. They force you to get a job or they put you back in prison. So it, it's more of a money thing. Those are the halfway houses are, are privately owned and right. By using rehabilitation-focused programs, former inmates will be more able to more easily adjust to being back in the world, easing the stress of this harsh transition. Norway and Finland have had great success after replacing their punishment-focused prisons with rehab-focused prisons. With the implementation of a proper rehabilitation program in prisons, former inmates will be able to more easily transition back into society and are less likely to return to prison. Although some will argue that programs for prisoners are already existent, in most cases, they are easily taken away from inmates and punishment is used as a replacement. This would then, ironically, cost prisons more because it's expensive to care for a mentally ill prisoner. This then hinders their mental state, is counterproductive from the original purpose of prisons, which is to help rehabilitate inmates. By investing in mental health programs, it would not only lower the cost of expenses for prisons, but better the lives of prisoners with mental illnesses. But what other aspects should be taken into account to ensure a steady rehabilitation process? Uh, I received a 20 year sentence. Mm. So, and I wound up doing 15 years and four months. 156 months, which is 13 years. And I've served eight. Long prison sentences serve to emphasize the punishment of prison. Mentally ill prisoners are more likely to serve longer prison sentences compared to average prisoners. A 2003 study reported that in Texas, keeping a regular prisoner costs $22,000 a year, but keeping a mentally ill prisoner can cost from $30,000 to $50,000. This system, which binds people to prison, serves to worsen mental health and is punishment focused, needs to change. Mental illness must be taken into consideration for sentencing. While mental illness can't erase the severity of a crime committed, it factors heavily into the treatment plan. Realistically, over-sentencing only ever worsens the situation. Addressing the disparities in sentencing is the first step towards justice behind bars. The criminal justice system inflicts more damage on those that are already severely affected and puts people in unnecessary danger. Changing our mindset on how to handle mental illness can benefit both the world now and future generations. Removing this fear from jail can also help crime rates and let those affected seek help. This can ultimately lead in less deaths and more trust in the police. However, this is just the first step in a long process of reformation. Progress requires change, and justice requires empathy.